What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I hope you like this video. This is Kiki's World, season finale of um, season one, and I really hope they give it a season two. I'm here for it. I was enjoying it. I loved it. Um, I think this was, even though, you know, we had our ups and downs with Miss Kiki, I think it was a good opportunity for people to see Kiki Y, where she is now, what she has going on in her world now. Um, she's got new music that I'm definitely excited about. So, anyway. So I'm here for it. I hope they renew it. I hope they give us another season. So we open up. We have Andre talking to his boyfriend, Jerome. And then we have Kiki talking to her mom. And, of course, they're talking to their respective, you know, in their conversations about the other person. So Kiki is talking about how she feels about the situation with Andre. And she really just feels like Andre has taken advantage of this opportunity and is not focusing on her and forwarding her brand and doing what he's supposed to be doing as her manager um, promoting his own, you know, his own, um, products and things like that. And on the flip side, Andre is saying the reason why I feel like I have to seize the moment and focus on me is because Kiki is so unpredictable because there have been so many things going on with Kiki. Um, he went from being her personal assistant to her manager. And he said, you know, things really haven't been the same since that power dynamic change because it's almost like she still sees me as her assistant and not as her manager. And I'm just, she's just not respecting me in that role. And Jerome, his boyfriend was like, listen, his boyfriend started crying and everything. He said, I'm, I'm just frustrated. I'm frustrated because I know how hard you work and I know what you do. And I hate to, as your man, I hate seeing you being disrespected and you being not treated well. And that bothers me. Um, and Andre, he said, you know, you, you're going to have to just set some very, some very set in stone, um, boundaries and not let them be crossed because I feel like Andre sets boundaries, but he doesn't, he doesn't hold her to them. And because he doesn't hold her to them, she keeps crossing them because there's no, there's, there's no, there's no problem with the boundary because she crosses it they make up she crosses it they make up and so the boyfriend was like no you're gonna have to really mean it you have to say what you mean to mean what you say and you have to stick with it um so they're planning a listening party for kiki where kiki is going to allow her fans to pick her single so there's three songs that they've been working on I'm gonna be honest with you. I love all three of those songs. I mean, they are definitely, they are definitely giving me R and B. Um, we see her in the studio. We see everybody being excited about it, and we find out that Dre has invited a special guest, one of a, 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 a good friend of Kiki's that's in the industry, to come and be a part of the listening session as well. They set up a nice outdoor. Um, situation where the, the, the people could sit at tables and, and enjoy libations and things of that nature and listen to her live. Now, they're supposed to be listening to her live. But Kiki don't never be remembering none of the words to her own music. So she was half live, half, you know, ooh la la, la 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 la, okay? But it was a beautiful, beautiful event. Um, it's definitely something that I would love to have gone to. Like if I lived down in Atlanta and I saw it advertised, that's one of those things that I'd have been hitting my friends up like, y'all, y'all trying to do this? What's up? Y'all trying to go? Y'all trying to go? So, um, the crowd ends up picking a song that Kiki likes and the special guest was Faith Evans. And so Kiki, of course, was so happy to see her. Um, and you know, Faith was there and, um, they picked another song. I think the song was called something about my ex or letter to my ex. <laughs> Here go Kiki. She said, I, that, I don't like that song, but maybe Faith thinking about her ex. Because <laughs> you know Faith just went through this whole divorce with Stevie J, honey. I think the song they ended up picking was the song Her, but they're not really talking about her. they talking about her. And it's one of those really cute play on word type songs. I, I, it was Again, I was here for all three of the singles, but I definitely like those two the best. I love a song that tells a story. I love a song that has a that innuendo that gives you, you know, like SWV downtown. You know what I'm saying? It's, I mean, I could give y'all a million examples, but y'all know what I'm talking about. So I was here for it. And it was really a good event. Kiki um, and, and Andre, they were very professional and, 
They did the things that they that needed to be done. Child, her husband was there in his uniform. Let me tell you something. Can we give a can we give a round of applause to Zachariah staying in uniform this whole season? This man has not changed his uniform this whole season. That's it. He didn't gave us that. The skull cap. And it's the old school skull cap. It's the old school one, the do rag style with the thing hanging off the back, like they, like we the kid, the, the 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 guys used to wear back in the nineties. The do rag with the thing hanging off the back. I don't think too many guys wear it like that anymore. But shout out to you for sticking sticking to the old school style. The white the black wife beater. Now he switched up with us. Sometimes it was the old school style white beater. Sometimes it was that new design that they had, but it was black. He had the black sweats. With the black socks and the slides. I think he had slides on in every damn scene. The only time he switched it up was for Roger's birthday, which I said before, when he had the black hoodie on, right? But shout out to Zachariah for staying in uniform the whole time. I'm with you, bruh. I am with you, okay? Now, the other thing we had going on in this episode was we have Kiki talking to her dad. Now, her dad is a minister or a pastor. Um, and she was talking to her dad about Andre as well. And her father said something that I absolutely love. And Kiki ain't want to hear this. Kiki didn't want to hear this because Kiki said, I just feel like this is my time. And I feel like, you know, um, that, you know, this is about me. And her father said, okay, but him being successful doesn't dim your light. Like him doing his thing has nothing to do with you doing your thing. Like, everybody can win. And he said, and why are you going to allow the thought of him being successful to make you feel like that that automatically means you're not going to be successful? And all Kiki could say was, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he was like, listen, you getting mad and you getting upset about something that one had, it was for you, it was for you. What God has for you is for you. And you getting yourself all worked up over this. What's for you is for you. So, Lorna also asked the, the daddy for help when it comes to Raja. Because she said, you know, <laughs> now, I, listen, unfortunately for, for Lorna, social media that picked up on the sound bites from this episode the episode was three weeks ago but they just picking up on it so i'm sure she getting it from every which way as it relates to what she did or didn't say as it relates to raja or whatever but let me say this lorna i really feel like you would throw your rock and hide your hand kind of person because now you're playing victim now you are acting like oh my gosh how could why are they doing this to me when you said some you probably did say some things that I'm not saying that you homophobic. That's not what I'm saying. But you probably said some very insensitive things. And here's my thing right here. When someone tells you, you hurt me, I really need people to stop defending and say, I'm sorry. That wasn't my intention. Unless it was your intention. You see what I'm saying? You may not have meant anything by it. But if somebody comes to you and say, you know, when you made that comment about, you know, when people first come out of the closet, they're messy. That was kind of, that hit me. That hit me some kind of way. It, it hurt my feelings. And, and coming from my grandmother, it made me feel some kind of way. That's what you're supposed to say. You're supposed to say, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean for that to, I didn't mean for it to come out like that. I didn't mean for you to feel that kind of way. That's what you're supposed to say. Not all of these excuses. And now you're acting like he's taking it too far and he's doing too much. Now, do I think that Raja is disrespectful in the way he's handling it? Yes. But do I feel like his feelings are valid? Absolutely. His feelings are valid. Now, I shouldn't. Yeah, his feelings are valid. That's a full stop. I was trying to. I was. I was thinking about doubling back on the disrespect part of it. Do I feel like it's? Do I? Do I feel like it was disrespectful or not? I do still feel like there's some level of disrespect because that is still his grandmother, but. So, they're at the listening party, and when the grandmama shows up, Roger just doesn't speak. Like, he's over it. And I don't... I think it's more that we don't know. 
for him to be this extreme in his feelings. I, I really, really, really think there's more to this that we don't know. Because Roger is so over it. But he does agree to have a conversation with his grandmother, with the granddaddy there. I guess he's supposed to play mediator. Did Roger show up in a positive mood? No. He showed up with an attitude. He showed up ready to be mad. That's my opinion. He showed up with the thought process that this isn't going to work. That's my opinion. But the grandmama didn't make it no better. Because here's the thing. Roger started off, the first thing he asked you was, why don't you like Haley? That tells you what he's most upset about. He is most upset about the fact that you have decided that for whatever reason, you don't like this girl. And that you have been vocal about it. And you've been disrespectful about his relationship with Haley. Allow him to say what he needs to say. Hear him. See, a lot, and I've been guilty. I, oh, I'm so guilty of it. We listen to respond. We don't listen to understand. Right? And I have been guilty. That's something I am truly working on. But when you get to cutting people off and talking over people, which I have a bad habit of doing. I'm, I'm not listening to, re I'm not listening to understand what you're telling me. I'm just listening to respond because I can't wait to get in. It's like playing double dutch. I remember when you was a kid, you played double dutch. I couldn't wait to jump in. So I'm not really trying to understand what you're telling me. I'm just ready to respond. And that's what grandma did. That's what Lorna did. Roger could barely get out what he was mad about, what he was upset about, what he wanted to talk about before she was cutting him off and telling him, no, nah, that didn't happen. Now, come on, Roger. Now, come on now. You know that's not true. You know I didn't do that. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know. So at a certain point, I think he just shut down and he was over it. Because it was like, and y'all know we get the edited version of these things, Right. So the conversation probably went on a little bit longer than what we saw. But what we saw, she wasn't letting that boy get in a word. Every time he tried to say something, she was talking over him. She was cutting him off. And not only was she talking over him and cutting him off, she was telling him, you wrong. You're wrong. Which translates to your feelings aren't valid. He shut down. He got up to leave. And she said, if you leave, this is just done. He said, well, I guess it's done then. Because now you done gave him an ultimatum. So that did not go so well. Next, we see Andre talking to Kiki after the, the after all of this. You know, like I said, everything went well with the listening party. They picked the single, all those things. We see Andre go over to Kiki's house to talk. And Andre is trying to talk to Kiki about their situation. And Kiki's not ready to talk. And again... Is it frustrating? Yes. But if she's not ready to talk, it's not going to go anywhere and it's going to turn into a whole nother damn argument that's not going to progress positively, right? But Andre was like, but Kiki, we really need to clear this up. I really want to talk about this. I really want to talk about this. And she wouldn't. She refused. And so he said, okay, fine. So at this point, it's just business. She said, fine. Yep, it's just business. And he said, okay then everything that I am doing for you on a personal level, I am going to return it to you. Whatever task, whatever jobs, whatever things you need me to do that is not about your business, I am returning it to you. She said, okay. And you could tell he wasn't happy about it, and you could tell she was hurt. And as soon as he walked out the door, she just started crying. She just broke down crying. And she was very hurt by it. And I understand her being hurt by it, uh, but maybe that is what's best. Maybe that is what's best for y'all right now. I think that y'all relationship is built on love and built on friendship. And I think y'all will find y'all way back to each other. But Kiki is also dealing with a lot. She has a sick child. She got 10 other children. Hell, she got a kid that just showed up at her house. She don't know where that baby came from. Um, and clearly, she's not leaving. Um, you got your mama that got issues with, 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 the, with your, with your um, son. 
And then they kind of glossed over it, probably because um, her brother didn't really want to talk about it. But we found out that her brother has his cancer has returned. So you, Kiki does have a lot going on, and I do think a lot of this played into it. And we know that doing a show is stressful. Um, so I I welcome a second season because there are a lot of unanswered questions. Because where we left off, they let us know that Raja and Grandma still are not speaking. And Kiki and Andre still have not figured this out and have not worked it out. I would love to see a season two where we get more of a dialogue, more understanding of what was happening with Raja and Grandma. Um, I would love to see Kiki and Andre try to rebuild their relationship. I would like to see more on the kids. I would like to see more information from, you know, with her other children. Definitely want to see progress with the baby, that the baby is doing better. Um... Um, and, and where are we with the music? Are we doing a tour? Are we dropping singles? We got some, doing some video shoots. Like, I'm, I'm here for all of that. I'm here for season two, VTV. This is a great, great show. So anyway, let me know what you guys think. I will talk to y'all later.